Good afternoon, and welcome to the Resume Writing and Job Interviewing Tips Workshop. My name is Michael Burt. I'm a professor at Prince George's Community College. I'm also program manager on the CyberWatch NSF ATE grant. Just to give you a little commercial. Uh, Prince George's Community College was founded in 1958, and today we have nearly 40,000 students that are, take part in over 60 programs, one of them being our information insurance program, which we were recently awarded to be a, a center of academics, academic excellence for two-year colleges. We were one of six community colleges to be the first awarded that last year. Um, which is quite an honor when you consider that there's 1,200 community colleges in the United States. Uh, CyberWatch, as I said, is a NSF grant. Uh, we started out in 2005 with uh, 10 institutions, and now we have almost uh, 60 educational institutions. I think we have about 38 community colleges and 20 four-year institutions involved with this. Uh, our mission is simple. The mission of CyberWatch is to increase the quantity and quality of the information assurance workforce. So what we're doing is creating the next generation of cybersecurity professionals. And as part of our uh, our tasks that we are doing with CyberWatch, one of them is to create a sort of a toolkit for our students to, to prepare, to help them prepare to become a cybersecurity professional. And that's why we have this workshop on how to write effective resumes and prepare for the job interview. So with that, let's get, take a quick look at the agenda. So we'll talk about how to create an effective resume. We'll look at the goals, uh, the research needed, style, format, content, and then end up with a checklist to make sure that you've covered all the items. Then we'll go on and talk about preparing for the interview itself. Again, we'll start with the goals, and then we'll look at pre-interview tasks, uh, things you should do during the interview, and then what you should do afterwards, and then we'll end up with a summary on both uh, resumes and preparing for the interview. So the goals, well, obviously the number one goal is to get that door open, to convince a potential employer to let you in for the interview. So your resume should be a concise summary of all the high points of your education, work experience, and any other qualifications that are relevant to this particular audience needs and to your employment interests. And what it's not, is not a complete history of your life. So a resume should commu communicate your professional qualifications to potential employers to entice them into wanting to interview you. Remember that the uh, resume creates, normally creates that first impression of you. It's, a, it's your marketing tool and as such, as an introduction to you and your experiences. Make sure that you do research about each employer and the field in general to decide which messages are most important to your audience and communicate these messages in succinctly and clearly in a visually appealing format. Now, all these goals can be accomplished by your diligent research, compiling the appropriate ammunition that you need, strategically arranging the high points of your education, work experience, and other relevant qualifications. So, for example, if your education is more of a selling point about you than your work experience, then you list your education first. If your work is more relevant to the job that you're, that you're seeking, you list the work first. As I mentioned just 
earlier, make sure you research your target audience. You want to first identify all the key words about both your employer and the field into which you want to uh, get into. Understanding of your audience needs, their priorities, how they go about uh, what their hiring criteria is, as well as their vocabulary can't be understated. You know, every field has its own vocabulary or jargon, and strategically using some of these words in your resume communicates your knowledge in that particular fail field. Just make sure that you don't stretch the truth when you're doing it. And then, of course, you want to get all your uh, life's relevant facts together. Make sure you have all your dates and uh, GPAs, things like that, all co compiled so that you can put them into your resume. Because the one thing you want to make to do is to make sure that you are more prepared than your competition. When uh, moving on to the style of an effective resume, you want to use action verbs, very strong adjectives. For example, uh, just to give you some examples of that, use words like administered, analyzed. Collaborated, consolidated, coordinated, delegated, developed, evaluated, executed, formulated, influenced, interpreted, negotiated, organized, prioritized, repaired, solved, supervised, upgraded, just to mention a few. Make your resume uh, in future or presence oriented. This will suggest that I am this kind of person with these abilities as my past record demonstrates. Avoid repeating uh, words or phrases. Uh, leave out unnecessary words, sentences, phrases, such as duties include hired to uh, project involved, for example. Don't use the first person I or any pronoun. <clears throat> Avoid any self-flattering terms, such as highly skilled, outstanding, or excellent. Describe your, your, your accomplishments effectively and let the readers decide for themselves that you are well qualified. Be consistent and use the same grammatical style throughout the entire resume. Be honest and accurate. Don't, but not overly modest. Convey, convey to the style and content of your resume an understanding of the needs and priorities of potential employers. When thinking about the format of an effective resume, you want to stick to one, maybe two pages in total length period. Uh, one page, two pages if you have an advanced degree, degree or extensive experience. You know, most people you'll find that they'll need the two pages, but don't go over. Again, appearance is very important. You want to make sure that your page is, uh, can be easily scanned and it's graphically pleasing to the eye. In other words, leaving plenty of white space so that the key phrases that the interviewer is looking for jump out at them. When selecting a format for your particular resume, uh, customize the layout. Select a format that suits your qualifications and the job that you're going after. Don't automatically follow someone else's um, because that may not be suitable for you. Use different emphasizing techniques, but don't overuse them. Use them judicially. I mean, <laughs> use uh, underlay, bold paste, italics, bullets to emphasize your credentials. But again, don't overdo the emphasizing techniques.
Moving on to the content. First, you need your contact information. So put your name, address, phone number at the top of the page, email address as well. If you have a second page, repeat your name at the top. But also keep in mind, especially if you're submitting online, uh, keep personal information at a minimal. I hate to say it, but you always kind of have to think about keep the identity theft problem in mind. So you don't want to give uh, if you if you're putting a resume in in like an online database or uh, where you don't know all the recipients, you might want to keep that in mind. And be careful what information that you're giving. You want to highlight skills, accomplish, accomplishments, capabilities, and work experience. You want to give evidence of your personal impact. Show not only that you completed tasks, but how you contributed to the organizational goals in completing those accomplishments. Include marketable and or relevant data only. For example, include uh, classes that have been uh, most important in your education and are most relevant to this type of work that you're seeking. Don't provide an extensive list of all the courses you've taken while in school. Choose the topic headings that invite your, your readers' interest. For example, related experience, overseas experience, or skills rather than employment or other. Use specific numbers to convey size or scale of a project or budget or staff supervised. Give examples that demonstrate desirable personality traits such as leadership, interpersonal facility, confidence, and independence. Then keep it uh, uh, or minimize personal information and omit unrelated uh, memberships, your age, marital status, or health status, information that is rep repetitive or implicit. For example, you don't need to list your high school graduation if you're already a college graduate. Or you want to, don't want to list any out-of-date out of uh, information, especially if it's irrelevant. If you are a U.S. citizen or hold a permanent resident visa, include this if readers might have any reason to think otherwise. Generally, it's a good idea to exclude data relevant to salary expectation, religious or political affiliations, and geographic description. When submitting your resume for employment, the chances are growing that some scanning technology may be used to read it. And then also, a, in addition, uh, when they scan it, they may uh, also use um, certain criteria. In other words, they may do like a keyword search as they scan it into their database. Uh, so you want to fill your resume with as many of these words as possible. You can only make reasonable assumptions about what a specific employer will ask, but keep a log of keywords that apply to your occupation in the industry. References are usually omitted, although you should line up at least three and just make sure that you ask them ahead of time. Uh, you want at least one or two that are non-academic, what you have. Uh, it can be listed separately, separately and made available when requested. So um, employers will assume that references are available upon request, so leave that phrase off your resume. So let's go into our checklist. As I mentioned earlier, don't use some of those standard templates like uh, you know Microsoft Word has a bunch of them, but they don't. But they don't. Uh, there's a lot of graphic stuff in them or color, and they don't scan very well. So you want to stay away from templates like that or any fancy graphics. Use a laser printer. Stay away from inkjet. Uh, use a conservative font. Uh, Arial, Times New Roman are a couple of good examples. 
as far as the paper, use a standard size, eight and a half by 11, but you can make it a, a high quality paper, you know, like a, a good 20% you know, cotton fiber or something like that. Stay away from exotic colors because again, they don't Xerox or scan well. And I think I mentioned this before, but if you have a second page, make sure you're putting your name on top. Don't fold or staple. Use a large envelope if you're going to if you're going to mail the uh, envelope, or if you want to put it into an envelope to hand to a potential employer. Get people to help you uh, review. You know, ask a counselor, friend, someone unfamiliar with your background to re to review your resume for for clarity and effectiveness. Tailor your cover letter and resume to the specific qualifications of the job for which you are applying and or to the specific employer. Make sure the content is complete. Include all important information such as dates of graduation, your major, GPA, et cetera, et cetera. And then again, proofread it one more time to ensure that you've used correct spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Moving on to the interview. Your main goal, get hired. Get hired for the right job. Get hired for the right salary. Get hired with the right benefits. That's it all. And again, just like you would with the uh, resume, when you're getting ready for the uh, interview, you research your potential target. Learn everything you can about them, especially the successes that they uh, have, have had. Anticipate questions and prepare your answer ahead of time so you can practice them. For example, uh, employers might uh, simply say to break the ice, uh, tell me about yourself. Okay. Make sure that you work into that, though, uh, your, some of your uh, qualifications. They might ask you, uh, what do you know about the type of uh, work we do? This is your chance to show you how well you did your uh, your research. If they ask you something negative, like what is your weakness, always come back with a positive answer. Uh, for example, my spelling is not always perfect, so I always use a spell checker. What are your strengths, they might ask. Describe your skills in a way that will show that you are a desirable employee for their company. Again, if they ask you something negative, or that could be negative, like why did you leave your last job? Again, come back with a positive statement. Try not to say that I was just fired or terminated or quit or had a babysitter or couldn't get along with coworkers or supervisor. However, you could say I left uh, for a new job. Uh, the contract had ended or the seasonal work. It was temporary work. I uh, was going for a career change. I went back to school. I, I left to raise a family, or I re relocated to another geographical area. Uh, we have to look at your resume and see that you uh, had some blanks in there, and they ask you why have you been unemployed for such a long time. Tell the truth. Emphasize that you were looking for a good company where you can settle and make a good, positive contribution. If they ask you something like, why, sh why should we hire you? Again, Make a positive statement, such as, I would like the opportunity to work with you and believe I can have a positive impact. And again, if they ask you if you have references, you know, uh, make sure that you have that with you. Now, normally at the end of most interviews, uh, the interviewee often gets the uh, opportunity to uh, ask questions. Again, have some ready. For example, for example uh, you're asking who would supervise me. Um, when are you going to make the uh, make the hiring decision? What are the uh, opportunities for advancement? What kind of training is provided or available? Is there a dress code? The next one is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it's one I uh, I'm always yelling at my son about. If you're a social media user, 
make sure that you are setting your profile to private because if you don't think if you uh, if you don't think that interviewers google you before you come in or look you up on Facebook or MySpace you're crazy a lot of the hiring managers I've talked talk to do this all the time as one of them put it uh, we do it to weed out people who wouldn't be a good fit in the company structure culture so don't give them any ammunition like uh, to not like you set your profiles to private and be careful what you put on these sites because um, once it's on the internet it's always on the internet also before you go to the interview make sure you practice even if you have the opportunity to practice in front of a camera, if you've got a friend that will, you know, help you with that, uh, tape it so you can, you know, look at it, critique yourself, and go alone. Don't be taking any children. Don't take any friends, relatives, pets, or strangers along with you. Go alone. One of the critical things, be on time. There's absolutely no excuse for it, none whatsoever. You don't want a pissed off person interviewing you. You leave extra early. You do whatever it takes to be there on time. Blaming it on traffic or anything else doesn't matter, even if it's true. But on the same avenue, don't be too early either. And most of the... Uh, Sites I've seen you know, suggest that 15 minutes is, is the proper time. So now we told you that you know do whatever it takes to get there. Go get there. If you get there early, sit in the car. Uh, walk around the block, assuming it's a nice neighborhood. Um, go to a coffee shop and have a soda or a glass of water. So you don't have coffee breath. Also. Remember that uh, when you're being interviewed, let me back up here. Remember, you are being interviewed as soon as you walk in the front door. So, you know, many people don't never think of the receptionist as being an interviewer, but it is true. Um, a lot of experts will tell you how often that it's very common practice for the receptionist to report back to hiring managers how candidates behave when they were in the waiting room. So don't be remembered as the one who ate all the candy out of the candy dish or spoke disrespectfully to the receptionist. When grading your interviewer, make sure that you know the name and say it properly and begin with a good hearty handshake and a nice verbal greeting. Always keep a very positive demeanor. Make sure you have frequent eye contact. Um, most experts will say to that uh, somewhere between 40 and 60 percent of the time you should be making eye contact, because more than 60 is intimidating. Less than 40 percent comes off as shifty and perhaps insincere or even dishonest. Dress in a very clean, conservative manner. Brush your teeth. Don't eat or chew gum during an interview. Make sure as you go into a job interview that you've showered and wearing clean clothes. If you like wearing cologne or perfume, don't wear any in the day. Don't wear any on the day of the interview. Why subtle smelling? Why what subtle smelling to you may be overwhelming to your interviewer. Don't play with your face hair. Interviews can be a, a nervous experience, but rubbing your chin, twirling your hair, or anything else along those lines make you look like you're lying or lacking confidence. Both not good. Listen carefully to the questions asked. Ask the interviewer to reset the question if, you're, if you are confused. Answer the questions as directly as possible. Be very polite about doing it. Be upbeat and make positive statements. Don't use any slang. Don't make jokes. Too many people think they are funny when in reality they're not. A job interview is the place to test your material. So be friendly and outgoing. Save the jokes for later. 
For God's sake, don't babble. When answering a question, answer the question. Don't start out answering the question and then veer off to talk about something else. Make sure your answer directly reflects the question being asked. Less is more. Sometimes certain details of your life are better left unsaid. It goes without saying, but don't flirt with the interviewer. Obviously, this should be common sense. But experts will say that this is one of the things that can uh, tank an interview. If you've worked before, talk about what you learned from it. But whatever you do, don't ever badmouth a previous boss. Badmouthing a previous boss in a job interview is a huge negative. They may have been the worst boss in the world. But talking about it in a job interview, like I said, is a huge no-no. Use examples of how your skills and abilities would fit the job. Bring your backup information. Bring your fact sheet with telephone numbers, addresses of your references, and former employers, just in case you're asked to complete an application, for example. Bring extra copies of your resume. Bring a notepad. Very few people bring a notepad with them to a job interview. It's a very subtle thing that makes you stand up and take notes when appropriate. Now, that doesn't mean to bring your cell phone and and whip that out. That's not a good thing. Don't be sitting there texting in information. Use a notepad. Go with the old folks. And then close out the interview properly. Make sure you've asked for, for business cards from all the interviewers Asking for the uh, business cards of all the of all these people uh, that you have met, and then take a a second to actually read them, read each one. This will not only be helpful in remembering each person you met with, but will make it easier uh, with some of the post-interview activities that we'll talk about in just a minute. Thank them. Thank them for taking the time to interview you. Thank you for. Thank them for inviting you in. Let them know that you're interested in the job. If you truly feel position is a fit, let them know. Tell them you would like to get uh, advanced to the next round of interviews. And be prepared to tell them why you want to be brought back. And finally, the, uh, preparing for any of you the post interview activities, um, send a thank you card. Neatly handwrite, or if you've got handwriting like myself, use you can type it. Um, add the, uh, address the note to the interviewer or lead interviewer, it's more than one. Keep it short. Maybe, for example, in the first paragraph, you thank the employer for the interview. Also mention that you are interested in the position. In the second paragraph, Uh, briefly state a few of your skills without repeating the information on your resume word for word. Include any important information not mentioned at the interview. In the third paragraph, provide your contact information, telephone number with area code, and email address if you have one. Most everybody has one. And again, keep it formal. Sign the note with both your first and last name. Proofread the note. Ask someone else to proofread it as well. And then do this in a timely fashion. Uh, I've seen everything where it says do it within 24 hours. Others say do it within two days. Um, All in all, it was uh, from the research I saw, everybody suggests somewhere between one and three days to send it. You can also follow up with the emails. Again, keep the text short on the emails and to the point. Um, And as with the uh, note, sign the email formally uh, with your first and last name. And you don't want to really do this more than once or twice. You, you want to let them know that you are interested and, in, in, you know, keep oiling the squeaky wheel, but you don't want to uh, bug them too much. So in summary, let's take a look at uh, both the resume and interview process, starting with the resume. 
You want to uh, communicate who you are and how you want to be perceived. This is the underlying foundation for all the information in your resume. Sell it. Don't just tell it. Selling describes the benefits and potential results to the employer. Telling simply states facts. Use keywords. Every industry has its own vocabulary jargon. Strategically using some of these words in your resume communicates your knowledge in the field. Use the big and say the little. Focus on the big accomplishments and experiences in your resume. Save the smaller details for your interview. This helps to keep your resume in a reasonably, at a reasonable length and provides in, interesting information to share in your interview. Make your resume interview able. Lead the reader to the information you want them to know about you. Good organization and content can lead to stimulating conversation. Eliminate confusion with structure and context. Make information easy to find with clearly defined headings and sections. Define the context in which you worked, for example, your job or title or your job title or position. Use function to demonstrate achievement. Refrain from simply listing your responsibilities at former jobs for an employer, because that's boring to read. Share what functions you were part of and what changes occurred from your involvement. Remain in the realm of reality. While it is important to highlight the positive, do not create the positive. Do not push the bounds of truthfulness. Be honest about your skills, education, and experience. Be confident. You are the only individual with your unique combination of experience, education, skills, and achievements. Be error-free. Very, very important. Your resume cannot contain a single typo, misspelled word, or any other type of error. Have your resume proofread by multiple people, friends, family, professors. Don't come to me, though. I'm just kidding. Et cetera. Summing up the interview side, again, I, I probably should have put the do the research on both sides, but because it is extremely important, both of them, but uh, can't emphasize them more to properly do the research. But it's especially important going into the interview because you want to, when you're in your talks, you want to impress the fact that you took the time to learn about them. Be presentable. If you're a man, wear a suit that fits. Don't cut quarters. If you're a woman, wear some conservative too. I mean, and also don't cut corners. Uh, when it comes to the ironing or dry cleaning, also while you're, uh, you should always wear deodorant. Try to avoid perfumes and colognes. You never know who will be allergic or just downright adverse to your scent. There was a, a hiring manager that uh, once told me a story about how he didn't select a, an incredibly well-qualified candidate for a role because uh, she wore the same perfume as his ex-wife. Not a good thing to do, but you never know. So you lean on the uh, conservative side. Don't be too early, but make sure you are on time. Again, like I said earlier, 15 minutes is the time that you should be 15 minutes, 15 minutes before the uh, scheduled appointment, you should be walking in the door. Uh, know whom you are meeting with and how to pronounce the name. That's always good. Remember, you are being interviewed as soon as you walk in the door. Talk about that. Remember that making sure that you don't badmouth the uh, receptionist or, or you know, her candy, his or her candy on the desk. Make the proper eye contact. I gave you the uh, 40-60 rule. You know, uh, your eye contact should be somewhere between 40 to, 2%, or 40 to 60% of the time. 
uh, eat before the interview, but not during the interview. Of course, if you eat before, don't eat anything that that has garlic or onions or any of that stuff with it. Uh, another big no-no, uh, don't look at your watch while you're in the interview. It, it kind of gives the uh, impression that you don't really care about the job or that you're in a hurry to go somewhere else, maybe to another interview, but you don't want them to know that. Um, And you don't want to be the one that creates any distractions to your interview. Don't be afraid to tell the interviewer or interviewees that you're interested in the job, that you want it. Like I said, if you feel you truly fit the position, let them know. Tell them you want to go on to the next round. And then finally, get the business cards from everybody so that you can use them to uh, generate your uh, notes and emails after the after the fact. Well, that concludes our workshop on effective resume writing and preparation for job interviewing. Have a good day. <laughs>